Well, we're, we're breaking records. And in 2019, when we passed by this brown dwarf, we said we were going to pass by it in December. And January, around there. And we had, in that time, the largest shift of our magnetosphere that ever seen on planet Earth. Currently, looking through Stereo A satellite, we see two planets uh, transiting the sun. The top one is actually Jupiter, and the bottom one is actually Mercury. And Mercury is on the other side of the sun, so there is no doubt that uh, Mercury is pretty far south, I would say. Anyways, just wanted to point that out. Now, Mercury does have a steep inclination. Now, look off to your lower left. Uh, you see uh, a comet uh, entering into the into the picture that is on the 21st. That's a comet that we showed you uh, entering into the frame from the lower left. And the reason we're showing be is because this whole transit of Venus has been filled with solar flares and comets. So then on the 24th, we had another one uh, come through uh, and very hard to see, again, in the exact same path as the other ones. And then on the 30th, we had the third comet come streaking in. And this is a little different view. And then on the 31st, we had the biggest one of the group come streaking by. And then right as Venus leaves, crosses right over Venus on its way to the sun. Crazy. Uh, five comets in the span of just a couple weeks. But when you look at the shape of the inner Kuiper belt and the shape of the outer Kuiper belt, you'll see symmetrical patterns that should ring a bell to some of you who grew up in the spirograph era. They still make spirograph, by the way. But the tighter you get, the closer in to the inner solar system you get, the inner portions of the Kuiper belt, the co these are all comet orbits. The, the comet orbits take on a pattern. And it's they're symmetrical in many uh, cases. Now, these are not Jupiter family comets. These are long period comets. And the longest one, of course, being uh, uh, the planet X itself, which is once used to be a star is now after several collisions is a fragment and a hybrid object and but when these objects come back every thousand years every two thousand years every three thousand years they, they cannot repeat the same exact orbit they cannot step in their same footprint why because the Sun is in motion and the Sun is traveling extremely fast <clears throat> so after a thousand years when these things finally get drawn back in and around the sun again, the sun's in a completely different position. Well, the sun you know, orbits around our galaxy every 100,000 years or so. So after 30, 40 reps, you'll have this pattern. It's exactly what you're going to have. The comets are like, are like breadcrumbs on Hansel and Gretel's path. So these, these things leave debris. And there's some symmetry to the long period comets being so spaced out so far apart. How can you create such symmetry? Well, it's all because Planet X has a symmetrical, uh, or should I say, consistent orbit, and the Sun has a consistent orbit. So you put the two together, you have consistent, repetitive patterns that the further out you get, you, the pattern looks more like a daisy. Uh, the closer in you get to the Kuiper Belt, the pattern looks more like a chrysanthemum. You get uh, a more complicated pattern. But the spirograph is an extremely uh, good way to visualize what is happening uh, to the Kuiper Belt and in the Kuiper Belt. 
inside and outside. And there's a reason this pattern on the inside kind of mimics the patterns we see uh, now. And the patterns on the outside, looking like a daisy, resembles the patterns we see now. And so it's, it, it's almost proof of a, a brown dwarf type object that can take comet comets and, and leave them in its dust trail um, so that we can see where it's been. And, and so the, the comets really tell a, a very, very telling story. The Kreutz comets are different. The Kreutz comets are, are a video all on themselves. They are related to Planet X as all comets appear to be. But what I noticed about the uh, Kuiper Belt, though, is that there's one side of the Kuiper Belt where the perihelions are occurring. When we see that pattern, we see that pattern where the perihelions are occurring, uh, mostly on one side of the solar system. And that ha happens with the Jupiter family. Uh, that happens with uh, longer period comets. And it happens now with the Kuiper Belt comets, suggesting that they were created by a collision on that side of the sun. So as we just rack up the numbers of comets that are streaming into our solar system, one must venture a guess that Planet X has spent a few years inside the Kuiper Belt. 